What's up, guys? Welcome to here, and we want to do a b b b breakdown slash live reaction and analysis slash review of no operators. Kusakabe, can he do it? I was gonna make a Kusakabe video, but I've also been waiting to make a no op video. The thing with no op though is that his videos are like thirty plus minutes long on average, meaning that I've either watched them alone because I know I'd be here for ten years if I reacted to them, or they're like an hour long. Like, he just did Dio versus every Jisoo Kaisen Sorcerer. I would love to react to that. We'd be here for five years. But luckily enough, Rhoda's uploaded this 8 minute and 40 second long video. And I don't have no binding vow. So we got a whole chunk to talk about. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me! Are you ready? A three. A two. A one. Go. With every... What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do have them to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact, before we let No Operator cook, allow me to give my loose opinion on whether or not Kusakabe can do it. And even if he can do it, should he do it? Let's tackle the easier one. I mean, technically both of these are easy. No. He shouldn't be able to. He shouldn't. Like, let... Nah. Like... I, you know what? I'll be real. I'll be real. In terms of a Kusakabe fan, where I personally put Kusakabe in my general ranking of characters across the entire series, I think he's neat. He wouldn't even graze my top 25. I don't think, can I name 25 characters I find more interesting or like more than Kusakabe? Let's, let me whip out the notes app and let me, let me get cooking. Let me see if I can do it. Because if I try to do it off head, I would loot off head. Lord have its mercy. But let's see. Let me, name, let me see if I can name 10 characters. Okay. Sukuna. Gojo. Itadori. Megami. <laughs> These autocorrects are killing me. Radio and Merino. Um, Nobara. Nanami. Banana. <laughs> the Lord, the, 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 these corrections are, are getting me. Shoot. Uh, Ryu. Uro. Naoya. Maki. Toji. This is in no particular order, by the way. Do not take this as anywhere near my top 5 or top 10 or top 25 or top 50. I'm just going just on naming characters who I find more interesting. And I just genuinely like more. Uh, pfft, Kashimo, most certainly. My boy. Who else I got? I'm literally, like, I'm, my, I'm filled with so many answers at the same time, but I can't. Higuruma. Shuino. I didn't know this guy's out. No, let me not do Ino. Ino. Ino's dragon. Ino's dragon. Let me let me be genuine. Let me be genuine. Characters who I actually like more. Huh? Honestly? Loki. Reggie. I'm not going to say Hazanoki. I like Hazanoki kind of as a meme. I'm not sure why I like Hazanoki, but I do like Hazanoki. I think it's his name plus his design that I really, really like. Who else? Oh, shoot. The whole Disaster Curse trio. Or... Well, I, I guess Quadrant, but I guess the disasters themselves. I find Han, I mean, more interesting. And, you know, I gotta find Chogo more interesting. Even Dag, I gotta find a struggle more interesting. You know I love my boy, Nalbito. I already did Maki. I don't know how many characters I'm at. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Why, well, I need six more? Six more characters? Shoot. Maybe I'm just legit running out of characters at this point. Because, I don't know, I'm really... I was going to say Angel. But then I think I'd be lying. But I can say Yuki. I can say Choso. So that's 21. I need four more. I need four. I feel like I'm missing on big popular characters. I, might... I already did Gojo. Who who am I missing out on? Oh, Ghetto. Shoot, there's Ghetto. Yuda. How did I forget Yuda this late? I, I love you. Wait, ah. Uh... I need two more, I think. Ghetto, Yuda, Tuts, Gary, Chose, Tiki, Nauto. <laughs> Dagon actually worked out. I'm sure Dagon worked. I need like two more characters, unless my math is incorrect. But essentially, hopefully, there are two more. There may be seven more for all I know. If I, if I were to go through the wiki right now, Nanako and Mimiko, I still find them more. I'm not the biggest Kusakabe Glazer out there. I'm not the biggest Kusakabe. Miwa. There, well, there we go. Characters. I just, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the character. Like, I get the appeal of the character, and I'm not saying I dislike him, but, like, I feel about Kuzukabe how I feel about Ui Ui. I find the fact that he's shockingly clutch, impressive, and neat. That is it. 
I have no general interest in the character. And once again, it's not his fault. It's like who's got me's poorly written or anything, but like, he's just not my thing. So there are my personal preferences for should he do it? No. You see that guy on the screen right there? You see Yuji Todori? That's his fight. Like, and like, that aside, should, he shouldn't. Once again, Itadori is Sukuna's character to go have a scuffle with, to go do battle with. So, of course, it has to be Itadori. He has to get the final blow or whatever. But should Kusakabe, can he do it? Should he contribute? No. No. I'm sorry. If Kusakabe does more than Kashimo did, I will hurl. If Kusakabe does more than Ryu did, I will hurl. If Kusakabe does more than Higuruma, than Kashimo, than Maki, than Yuda... Okay, I highly doubt Yuda. Yuda, Yuda did generational. He, Yuda, as, as much as I'll cloud on, bro, did, did, from time to time, out of love, out of love, it's out of, it's out of care. I like Yuda. Gosh darn it, don't... Please. Please, Yuda fan. But as much as I love my boy, he, he also had, like, a legendary generational run. But if Kusakabe does anything, I mean... <laughs> We're, we're in the we're in the catch twenty two, right? And I wonder how No Op's gonna tackle this. We're in the catch twenty two of like, well, legally speaking, nothing has mattered for the past twenty five chapters, because apparently Sugan didn't go all did not go all out against Gojo by Gojo's own admission. Sugan hasn't gone all out on anybody, and the moment he locked in, he one shot Maki. Well, not one shot. He locked in, and then like perception blitz, but he saw the land of black flash on Maki. But the moment he did, cook. Hakari is still fighting Urume. Nothing matters, logistically, right? Because Asuka is not going all out, his full power is fully explored. So legally speaking, can he do it? Depends on what can is. Beat Sukuna? Hopefully not. And probably not. But should he even be able to? No. Just no. Just based on how many people have already tried and failed and the caliber of these people. Especially after a Black Flash. That's the biggest thing. Maybe if Sukuna was not tweaking off a of Black Flash, then maybe we could have opened the general realm of discussion for Kusakabe doing anything. But no. If he lands a hit, wonderful. I don't want him to, though. I le <laughs> and, like, legit... I kind of want him to drop Kusakabe. But that that's, once again, my biases against the character. Let's see what Nohop has to say about whether or not Kusakabe can do it single source oh bt dubs as you can tell i'm already yapping extensively but link to the original video and to no option will be in the description down below he is a solid let's do the math let's do the math 25.2k away from 100k let me like the video real quick to help that algorithm you know what to do go leave that like but then again presumably if you found me you've most likely found no operator <laughs> if, I, if i had to take a guess but still go subscribe so like go like the original video so let's hop back into it. We're on the anti Sakuna squad, down for the count. And Sakuna, fresh off the Black Flash, that will undeniably begin his ascent back to prime form. The only thing that can stand in the way of the King of Curses is Kusakabi Atsuya, the strongest grade one. Is that how you say it? I get the Atsuya. Though I always forget. His, is that his first or is, is that his surname or his first name? I think Kusakabe is his first name. But then again, why would everyone know? I think maybe is Atsuya his first name? Kusakabe. But you know what? I, apparently I say Uruume wrong. In fact, Googler, come here. <laughs> How do you say... I, I hear people say Urume, but I always say Uruume. But then again, oh, the Googler's turned off. All right, never mind. No Googler. I'm going to keep calling him Urume. See, look, I already messed up. I'm going to keep calling him Urume or Urume. Whatever pops up. But Kusakabe, interesting. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. Once again, I I don't actually watch the anime. <laughs> it's right there. I don't watch it. I only watch it when I do breakdowns. I've done one breakdown so far because it's hard to find a video that, that like has the rest of the anime without random interstitial cuts. I'm trying. But with that being the case, who's coming? sorcerer jujutsu high has to offer not including the three great families of course now with the high recommendations of both nanami and gojo accompanied by meimei who we already knew <laughs> held kusakabe in good grace as far back as shibuya it's not a doubt anymore that kusakabe has been hiding true jujutsu power that none of us are ready to witness from the comparison that meimei makes to itadori yuji claiming his power is similar to kusakabe and that he may be able to achieve grade one status even 
even without a curse technique, implying just like Itadori, Kusakabi is a physical powerhouse who, much like Miwa, specializes in simple domain, barrier techniques, and swordsmanship. We already But I'm I'm stuck in this ever eternal conundrum, right? Kusakabe. Fantastic. One he's against Sukuna off of Black Flash though. And like, here's the thing. Unlike Higuruma Hiromi, right? What does Kusakabe have to offer that Sukuna has not seen before? Cause like notably when we're looking when we're looking at Sukuna and how he's been approaching the gauntlet he's been running, he had to put out a whole bunch against Satoru Gojo. He had to put out his whole first health bar, Maharaga, Adaptation, and then Develop World Stars. He had to do all that against Gojo, because Gojo offered a new wall that he had to overcome, the Infinity. When Kashimo came to the battlefield, he came to the battlefield and made Sukuna realize, wait a minute, time to incarnate. Then he incarnated, and then he washed him. But still, Kashimo added a new dimension. There was electricity, his high level of power, his history of being the strongest, and his conflict in question for Sukuna. He added something new, something Sukuna had not seen before. So... Okay. Higuruma had the entire unknown factor of the Executioner's Blade that Tsukuna himself was interested in. That's why he allowed the trial to pop off. That's why he had a little chat with Higuruma. That's why he even kind of low-key started training Higuruma because not only did Higuruma have a new, crazy, unknown technique that had both Tsukuna and Kusakabe's attention, not Kusakabe, Tsukuna and Kenjago's attention, but he also had legendary next level potential, becoming a grade one sorcerer by himself in two months, and even learning crazy things on the fly from domain implication by the same day by just watching it, and then spontaneously evolving RCT. And even then, Sukuna very quickly got bored and executed him. And then after that, we had Itsudo to Yuji, who developed an entirely new ability in blood manipulation, plus the ability to manipulate and attack the soul, and then topped that off with Yuta Ogotsu, dropping in immediately afterwards and dropping cleave sky manipulation angels technique a whole domain expand like and rika herself like legit brought the queen to the battlefield once again new stuff unique stuff stuff that took could interact with playfully like we see him do but what does kusakabe offer we've seen the strongest simple domain user his name was satoru gojo We've seen our strongest physical fight. Well, Maki's in it. I kind of glazed over her for a second. But even then, Maki brought something new to the table. One, because she literally didn't give him a choice about what he was going to eat at that table. She straight in the back. So, like, he had no choice in the matter. <laughs> and, of course, you know, you always got to have a choice. But with that being the case, putting that aside, Maki is literally the one thing he was actually interested to see. Why? Because she was a void of cursed energy. And he was like, whoa, wait a minute. How do you do that? Wait a second, I gotta prove myself. And then he locked in, and the moment he locked in, he hit the Black Flash. Everyone so far has brought something new to the table, something that the previous person either could not bring or could bring in a different variety. What does Kusakabe offer to Suka? Just what? Like, like, and I'm asking generally because I don't know. It can't be simple domain. Like I said, we've seen the strongest. We It can't be physical stats because we've seen the best of that too. And Maki and Yuji and Yuda and Rika, like we've seen that. Speed? Are we going to assume that Kusakabe is magically faster than Toji? Well, I guess Toji by proxy. But, like, faster than Maki? And Yuda? And Itadori? And Kashima? Like, are we really going to assume this? Huh? Like, wh I don't know. That's my main thing about Kusakabe and him being set up. And I say literally set up, because it is a setup. At the end of 253, he has nothing to offer Sukuna. Which is why I'm interested to see how he tackles it. Because, to be fair... Every single time Kusakabe was in lethal danger, Sukuna was either focused on somebody else, like in the case of the Higuruma fight, and he was also shocked by Kusakabe's ability to dampen his slashes, or B, Maki came in and dropkicked Sukuna to save Kusakabe's life. So, like, I don't know how Kusakabe's going to do anything on his own, especially now. And I don't think, like, and here's the thing, here's the counterpoint, because Noah brought up a fantastic point. Based on all the glaze Kusakabe got before the time skip, it's very likely he's much stronger than the average bear. For Gojo Satoru, someone who transcends everything, to look at you and be like, yeah, you're the strongest. You you, you, you dev him. You dev him. Maybe not the big three families. Maybe Nabito and Naoya will take you for a walk. But like outside of that, remember, that's a pre-time skip Kusakabe. So like clearly, Kusakabe's a monster. An animal. He's still great one, though. Not a special grade one. 
Nabito would probably still run his pockets right now. I don't see the vi That's the thing. I just don't see the vision. And if it were to happen, I don't think I'd like it. Because once again, I'm not... We're, we're in the fugue state, right? That's the big unfortunate part about being in the end game. Everything matters, yet nothing matters. The only thing that has definitively mattered, apparently, there are two things. One was the brain damage to Sukuna. It's why he has yet to open domain, and he himself, in his own head, is like, I can't open domain right now. Whoopsie do. So that's the one thing. Actually, three things. Three things. Then, it was the loss of the Ten Shadows, presumably, once again, assuming he can't do it anymore, from incarnating, which came from Kashimo, and also the loss of the first body into new body. That's also a Kashimo Gojo effort. That whole trio is a Kashimo Gojo thing. Nothing else has really mattered from that point on. Everything else, from Ur Ume's mouth to Sukuna's reactions and everything, has kind of been, eh, it doesn't matter. So I guess you could give Kusakabe something. You could give him feats on Sukuna because it wouldn't really matter. But at the same time, I feel like... <sighs> I always am quoting this line from Incredibles, and so does everybody else. But when everyone's super, no one will be. So if Kusakabe starts doing things against Sukuna, anything, breathing on Sukuna, breathing in his same vicinity, that's not just going to make Maki look bad. Especially, remember, it's going to retroactively make everyone else look worse. It's going to make Yuta look worse. It's going to make Rika look worse. It's going to make Itadori look worse. It's going to make Maki look worse. It's going to make Kashiba look worse. It's going to make Hikaruma look worse. Like, it's just going to do no It's going to do negative numbers. Like, I can excuse Maki cooking for half a second. I can excuse Yuta cooking for two whole chapters. I can excuse Yuji cooking for a little bit. I can excuse Kajima cooking for a little bit. I can't fully excuse Higuruma, but I kind of can based on how much slop he got by the narrative. And while Kusakabe's gotten his fair due share of narrative slop, I don't think the slop is good enough for a Black Flash Sukuna. I just... The vision. I just don't see it. Well, let's know how strong Yuji is, able to scale buildings and endure high-level attacks from even Sukuna, but also dishing out powerful blows with their own strikes. Well, but the thing is, well, he seems like he's about to go into that. One quick comment I want to make, though. Talking about Yuji, is that the Yuji he's referencing is a Yuji that's infinitely stronger than the Stutter Shibuya that Kusakabe is being compared to. And notably, if you take Sukuna's statement at face value, Yuda... Yuji and everyone else only increase their defensive capabilities, not their offenses. So if Kusakabe power-wise is being compared to start of Shibuya Yuji, and apparently he hasn't gotten stronger, only his current energy reinforcement and durability have increased. Like, what? What, 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 what are we expecting the start of Shibuya Yuji to do to... Who? Well, oh, not quite demon god level. Since Kusakabe hasn't received any crazy buffs from a cursed object like Sukuna, he okay, yeah. most agree, definitely agree. uses his own personal strengths and shortcomings in a tactical way to achieve the best results. Kusakabe was the one responsible for training Itadori during the one month time skip. And regardless of whatever soul swap, weird text bubble placement, jujutsu theory time nonsense is going on here, one thing is clear. When an entire room of sorcerers are present, and even at this point, Gojo Satoru himself is back, Kusakabe was the one chosen to mentor Itadori to the next level. Obviously, we know Yuji also trained with Choso and Kamo, but that's beside the point. And that is a good point. That is a good point. Kusakabe is the one who was training Yuji and led to the whole soul squad fiasco. Though admittedly, the further and further we get into the narrative, the less and less viable that seemed to be. Like, it may have just been a mistake. But then again, it's in it's in both the TCB translations and the officials. Like, admittedly, the wording is slightly different. But, like, that phenomena, which had everybody in their mama, myself included, <laughs> by the way, myself included, that had everybody in their mama believe in that, oh, we're cooked. <laughs> or, no, we're cooking, because Yuji Tudori can now swap souls. That kind of, like, woo, it kind of got, like, pushed to the side. Like, we've seen Yuji use his soul-bending technique and it wasn't that. So I, I'm not sure what this soul swap is meant to play. Maybe that has to be something he's going to do later. I don't know. But he, he, he does bring up a fantastic point. That Kusakabe is the one who was there to raise Yuji. To evolve him. To push him to a level even further beyond. This is a level beyond a sorcerer. But at the same time... Is that still enough? Like, unless we think Kusakabe is Yuji level. 
current Yuji level. Obviously not like Shibuya. We you know he's apparently set of Shibuya Yuji level. But like, do we really think Kuzukabe's that level? Would we like it if he... That's, that's my big thing, right? Because I've been seeing a bunch of Kuzukabe glaze, and I'm fine with that. And Kuzukabe, he, he's earned a lot of his glaze. Don't get me wrong. So he has very few feats. I he feel like he has barely any fights. But when he has his moments, they're impressive. Like, appearing and no-selling a maximum Uzumaki? Whoa. From Kenjaku? That was born of Mahito? Whoa there, big fella. I see, I see you slapping it on the table. Swinging it around. Might as well helicopter it a little bit. All right. And then, of course, pop it in and save in Higuruma's life or from those from those slashes with Simple Domain. Mm, good Josie stuff. But at the same time, I just, I don't, I, <laughs> and maybe this is once again my bias against the character and my heavy power scaling brain that's like, everything matters. Oh, everything. Oh, I need that. I need the feats. I need the feats. I need the feats. I'm talking F-E-A-T-S, not the double E. Like, Maybe that's maybe that's just me, but I don't want because come to do anything because I feel like it's just gonna it's gonna take a sledgehammer to the knees of the narrative and to the level of power Suga should be on. And I don't want that. You can say Sukuna's holding back all you want, and I'm fine with that for the most part. I'm not thinking, I made entire videos talking about the Sukuna problem and why I don't necessarily care about it too much as a problem because I think him being that powerful makes sense. And like I said, I can excuse almost everything else because it was something new and interesting to Sukuna. Kusakabe just this proves Kusakabe's cursed energy manipulation, as well as his martial arts capabilities, are comparable enough to Itadori to act as a sensei type figure. Whether this also includes soul manipulation or not is something we'll be getting into later. Considering Kusakabe is Ooh. Miwa's teacher as well, carrying around a sword isn't just for show. Despite Kusakabe doing his best not to use it or get into fights he can't win, it can't be denied. This also means he's able to proficiently teach barrier techniques like simple domain and infusing cursed energy into his blade to increase attack power. The man clearly also has abilities we haven't seen, whether they be further entries down the Bato sword drawing technique line or increased domain amplification slash anti-domain measures. But most importantly, Kusakabe is masterful enough in defense to shield himself and multiple others from a critical attack like Kenjaku's Maximum Uzumaki, a cataclysmic strike that leaves the ground scarred but hurts no one thanks to Kusakabe's capability capabilities. Surprisingly, this is even enough to make Kenjaku compliment Kusakabe, out of all the half dozen sorcerers at the location, saying he's the only one with any know-how. All of this points to Kusakabe having some kind of secret that's led him down this path. If Kusakabe wants to have any real chance against Sakuna, unfortunately, No, the, I kinda, my brain kind of like flatline. That, once again, that is his best feat. And that's cool, right? That's very cool. Very swagalicious. Very Spice Master. I have no idea what the last three words I said was. But, it's like, a casual Uzumaki being used on Miwa should be like whole worlds apart from Sukuna breathing. I, and I, you know, I know I'm sounding like a Sukuna slopper. A Sukuna glazer, if you will. But, I don't know. It's kind of just a matter of it's a matter of how how far can we stretch it? How far can we stretch? Oh, he's holding back. Oh, he's like it, we kind of run into. Oh, it's strange enough to say we run into the Goku problem, where it's like, ah, you see, even though I'm in Super Saiyan three, I'm actually weaker than base. Everyone knows the famous time. Oh, even though I'm still currently transformed into a Super Saiyan god, I'm actually just human level. lower. Laser straight through the chest. Or right before the tournament of power. Base Goku. Multiversal. Holding back so much he can be scratched by bullets. Like <laughs> that's that's the thing with Sugata. We're just gonna run into that. And unlike with Goku, where we can kind of excuse it, I can't excuse it with Sugata on Kusakabe in particular. And once again he offers nothing new. So I don't know. I don't know. That that one feat is good. It's juicy. His defensive capabilities are leveled up even more. But I, I don't know. Am I kind of a hater? I don't think I'm a, I, I may be. I may be. I, I, gotta look, I gotta look at the man in the mirror. And I just, I guess I just gotta figure out I'm just kind of a hater. Or maybe, maybe shockingly enough. Where are you? <laughs> maybe it's just the Sukuna Glacier in me that doesn't want his reputation to be damned. 
<laughs> even as a even as a Gojo Glazer, the slopper in me that's just fighting back against this. I just don't because I don't see the vision, and I don't want to see the vision. <laughs> it's like it's kind of like notably, I'm nearsighted. Fun fact. So like, whenever I'm looking at things far away, I need my glasses. But like. Imagine this fight right here. The fight that'll happen in 254 unless we cut away. But I don't know. The further, further and further we get, I don't think Akari versus Urube is actually going to be a fight. I think we're just going to keep... Ooh. Ah. E until Akari shows up. But... With that being the case, it's like you offer me my glasses so I can see something far away, but I have the general idea of what could happen, and I just knock the glasses out of your hand. I'm like, no. Don't show me that. That's how I feel... Right Everything now. we just That's talked it. about is not close enough to face a king of curses that is now regaining stamina thanks to his okay. Black Flash. Unless Kusakabe is going to start whipping out Black Flashes of his own, there needs to be a reason Kusakabe chooses not to fight out in the open. And this exact situation may fill every condition he needs to go all out. This is just a theory, but based on his relationship with Yaga Masamichi, another person who we know was technically a secret unregistered special grade due to his curse technique that allowed Yaga to make an unlimited amount of self-sustaining puppets that live even after he dies. It's completely possible the two of them were able to trust each other because they both kept each other's secrets. Of course, this could be debunked by noting the reason Kusakabe's tied to Yaga in the first place is all because of Yaga just being a good guy wanting to help Kusakabe's sister by quote-unquote reincarnating her dead son. But what if, like Yaga, Kusakabe is also a secret special grade? Two undercover powerhouses well aware of the higher-up prejudice against techniques they can't control. But unlike Yaga, Kusakabe's secret power isn't something he can just hide or pretend is something different. Yaga got lucky by saying Panda was a work of nature and a pure random anomaly that couldn't be recreated and was able to hide behind his normal puppets that weren't self-sustaining and keep everything secret in a hidden forest. Kusakabe, though, could have- I hate Panda. With a burning passion. I'd sooner jump headfirst off a cliff than praise that thing. But that aside, <sighs> this is an angle I didn't think of. Like, this, is what, this is why you gotta get. This is why you gotta consume other content. This is an angle I never would have even tackled. Kusakabe being secretly monstrous and having a technique and being crazy and next level and actually being like the fifth secret special grade. I still don't like it. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I just need to be kind of a comic. But man, I I I would I would despise it. I I I'm not despise it, because that sounds bad. Because once again, it's not like I actually dislike Kusakabe. Like, notably, if it's him or Panda, it's always gonna be Kusakabe. But man, dog, man, him I, I would that's the thing. Like no operator says, it's not like the groundwork hasn't been laid. It's been loosely laid. It's been hinted at. But like, it's there. It's it's present. It exists. That's the thing. From Kusakabe being random, just a grade one, rarely be able to face tank and block and pretty much no sell an Uzumaki, born of Mahito. Kusakabe being able to blitz in front of Higuruma and s s turn on symbol domain well enough that he could protect both him and Higuruma. Real good, strange feat for a guy who's supposedly just a grade one. Even if Sugun was holding back the slashes, Kusakabe. One-shotting those two random members of Ghetto's family and blitzing out of the way of Maximum Meteor. Good stuff. But, like... Like, it's the matter of investment versus execution. Because don't get me wrong, I'm under no delusion that Kusakabe is actually going to beat Tsuka. I don't think no operator is. I don't think anyone is. Once again, we're kind of all in the Kashimo land. Where we would like him to do something cool... But at the same time, we expect nothing. But at least for Kashimo, despite his very short run in the narrative, the man isn't around for even 100 chapters, he gets explicit, hefty, thick, multi-layers of glaze. Just being around. He gets the glaze that is required for me to have excused him doing anything to Sukuna. Well, you don't hear me complain about him somehow being able to tag 20 fingers Sukuna. When 20 Finger Sugan is able to sometimes dodge his attacks and is still a monster beast and it even all of his own right. You know, you make a bite. Because Kashimo got the hype. He got the narrative buildup. He got the investment. We, it wasn't a surprise that he had a hidden curse technique that could boost him up massively to the point where Sugan needs to incarnate. Not a surprising thing. Higurumi Hiromi, from the moment he was introduced, we had a whole chapter glazing this man and his potential. 
we he's the true potential man of JJK. We all say Megami, but realistically, Higuruma is potential man. So him breathing the same air as Tsukuna and evolving really quickly, built up, established, makes sense. Yuta Kotsu, the original main character. The shock horror, of course. One of the four special grades. Long since built up to be that guy. So, of course, him doing anything against Tsukuna makes sense. Rika, Queen of Curses, makes sense. Itadori Ryuji, main character, plus Tsukuna's form of vessel, plus probably consuming his other siblings, plus blood manipulation, plus <laughs> his liberation ant, plus the apparent mysterious history of Itadori Ryuji as someone Tsukuna recognizes from back then. Like, whole bunch of build-up. Makes sense he's able to do anything. Maki Zenin, the glitch in the system. Long since built up, the reincarnation of the war deity known as Soji Fuji Girl. It makes sense that you're able to do certain things, and whole arcs built around her, whether it be the Zenin Clan massacre arc or whether it be Sakura Jima Colony. We've done our time, we've done our due diligence. So, all those characters doing things but failing against Tsukuna makes sense. Kusakabe randomly pulling out special grade tier power, even if it's been hinted at loosely by the Kenjaku stuff. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. And, of course, you'd be like, oh, what, Pencil, you don't like fun? You don't like surprises? You don't like being bamboozled? I do like being bamboozled, within reason. This would not be within reason. <laughs> at least at least not to me. I always, I live by the idea that for something, whether it be a power leap or a plot twist or a reveal, you always want to plant heavy enough seeds. Sukuna taking over Megami. There were heavy seeds planted. The from the first chapter, it took a while, but you can do a hefty compilation and hit heavy, gobsmacker, slobber knocker moments building up to that reveal. No issues. Kusakabe, he has one talk with Yaga and blocks Max and Uzumaki and does something in Suina Slash. That's three. Three beans. I'm not sure those three little beans are good enough, but... That's me. Let's see what some crazy curse technique that makes him never want to fight or be put in a position to use it because it just exposes him entirely. But now that everyone's gone, perhaps this is the perfect opportunity for Kusakabi to show his true colors with no audience. Or not. That could all just be a pipe dream. Could not be true at all. But if Kusakabi is just a simple domain mm. merchant, there is still high hopes for Kusakabi being able to stall and hold off Sakuna in one of the coolest ways imaginable. Even with Sakuna feeling the core of his curse energy and severely boosting his stats with the black flash, Kusakabi has the perfect tool set to fend Sakuna off until either Maki or Yuji recovers. The biggest worry all of the anti-Sakuna squad had was Sakuna regaining his cursed energy output, resulting in higher attack power, quicker reverse curse technique, and potentially regaining access to domain expansion. And obviously, for all intents and purposes, whether Sakuna's attacks get stronger or his healing gets better, his domain is endgame, no doubts about it. What a great time for an anti-domain mastermind to enter the fray, potentially with a higher level simple domain than Gojo to defend against Sakuna's malevolent shrine. Possibly able to cast it multiple times, or maybe use domain amplification to dull and neutralize Sakuna's techniques for a time, if the King of Curses takes it easy. Either way, Kusakabi has been shown to withstand Sakuna's dismantle attacks before. Back against the wall, with, as far as he knows, no one coming to help him, Kusakabi just might be able to hold out for long Longer than most people are currently giving him credit for. If you really think Kusakabi doesn't have anything special to offer more than his sword drawing abilities and barriers, another great way Kusakabi could leave a lasting impact, as well as make Sakuna approachable to the remaining fighters we have left, is showing us the maximum version or highest level of domain restriction technique, which for some condition completely locks off Sakuna's domain. But the truth is, Kusakabi is also just as likely to be the first person to get hit with Fuga since the Shibuya incident since you know he was the person to remind yeah to remind us that it exists that's honestly once again maybe it's bad maybe i'm wrong for this maybe i'm a horrible human being but like but like for real for real nah i want that i don't want it. like once again How many, how many people would be happy if Kusakabe had a stronger simple domain than Sansa Gojo? Hmm? Hmm? How many of y'all would be happy if Kusakabe lasted more than five pages? I, I think that would... <laughs> like, the only people that may be entirely unaffected are, like, the Yuji fans. 
They may be like, it'd be like that. It'd be like that. Well, no, not the YouTube fans. The YouTube fans would be like, it'd be like that. It'd be like that sometimes. Not my goal. My goal lasted two chapters. What are y'all talking about? My goal survived a world slash. Your goal didn't. It's like, they'd be fine with it. But I know Gojo fans would be mad. I know Zucker fans would be a bit annoyed. I know the Magi fans would be in a tizzy. I know <laughs> the Yuji fans would be punching the air. Like, the Kashimo fans, all three of them now. I'm one of the three. And actually, I'm two of the three. I'm probably three of the three. But, like, we <laughs> we would all be metal. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's, a, it's the cost-benefit analysis. Once again, maybe this is just me, but the cost of Kusakabe doing anything other than getting Eno... I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> I genuinely don't think it's worth it. Like, I, I think Kusakabe should try to square up and either A, he gets smacked by Fuga for the memes, or B, Maki just gets back up and then Yuji re-engages and then there's a piercing blood from Chozo and then, like, the jumping re-begins or Hakari finally does something to finish off her Ume or just brings her Ume to the battlefield at this point. Like, Kusakabe doing anything. It's just like, Kusakabe before Hakari doing anything against Sugana. It just ain't worth it. Uh, like, you want to talk about shattering the narrative? And the audience that Sakuna has not used that attack yet, and it may or may not be his poetic justice. But that would just be a cruel and awful death. Honestly, I would have to start sending fan mail in to Gege and ask if he's all right, because God, I don't think we can actually handle any more critical language. Language. How, how could you? No operator. I trusted you, and you just left me to edit. <laughs> No, 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 let's see. Let me take a look. There we go. <laughs> Once again, I don't know. Where are these Kusakabe fans coming from? Y'all did not exist until 253. I swear. I swear y'all did. Like, and I'm not mad. Like, if Kusakabe's your favorite character, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Don't let my opinions ruin yours. But, like, I swear y'all didn't exist. And, like, some, half of you are memeing. Maybe 75% of you are memeing. But I've seen some of you. Some of you are genuine in your beliefs. Where were you? I've never heard of you before. <laughs> I swear you didn't exist. You spawned for the agenda. And you know, I'm something of an agenda man myself. So like, I'm not going to knock you. But at the same time, how's it feel to just pop into reality like that, huh? Huh? Because I know it wasn't organic. Well, deaths Let's like that in this moment. It's clear no matter what happens, Jujutsu Kaisen isn't ending on Kusakabi, the strongest <laughs> sorcerer available, saving the day. Again, it's most likely a Takaba situation where, against his will, Kusakabi will need to prolong the fight until either Hikari finishes off Arame, fingers crossed, Yuji or Maki heal themselves back up to fighting potential, or some other third unpredicted event occurring that brings everything back to neutral ground. One thing is for sure though, and not that I was wrong, about Kusakabe. Despite him acting like a coward in Shibuya and doing the absolute most to avoid any sort of conflict whatsoever, it appears to me that is more out of a sense of awareness in Kusakabe that exists even in sorcerers like Meimei. I mean, Meimei escaped during the fight against Kenjaku to a whole nother country and closes out most of her Tokyo investments. And we do see this attitude very apparent in Kusakabe's understanding. Meimei is most definitely not coming to his aid in this moment of desperation right now. And that tells me strong grade ones are not only powerful, trustworthy assets, they clearly are selfish enough to know when they should stay out of a bad situation, something that keeps them alive to fight another day. Regardless of what ends up happening, it's impossible to deny how much sorcerers like Meimei and Kusakabi, very unlikely allies, were able to contribute and help the main core group develop this anti-Sakuna plan. And although it hasn't really seemed like it's been working very well, we would not have gotten this far without Kusakabe's Irish. intelligent mind and tactical planning. Whether or not Kusakabe loses to Sakuna here, I will never be able to deny the cold hard truth of the matter. In his own funny and also pretty cool, Kusakabe Atsuya is language. Gosh darn it! <laughs> All at the end, editing me was asleep. Now I gotta wake him up. I gotta wake him up. Gosh darn it! But all right. So yeah. So okay, we're 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 on we're on the same page. So we're we're, we're on the same page. Ooh, ooh, how I didn't even notice that. When did he upload that? All fourteen Greek gods and goddesses ranked and explained. That's not all of them. I'm assuming he's ranked the Olympians, plus Hades, and then who else? Who's the fourteenth that you go with? I guess like, uh, probably if you go with like, 
Hestia being kicked. If you go like the Percy Jackson logic of Hestia being kicked off, I may have to watch that. It's probably three years long. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the binding vow that I put on myself subconsciously. I don't care if it's thirty minutes, an hour. I'm, I'm reacting to a full no op video. Gosh darn it, I'm gonna do it. But with that being the case, in fact, the go. If you haven't already, guys, please hit me with that. Uh, yep, absolutely. Hit him with the like, hit him with the subscribe, go peep the original video in the comment section, not in the, linked in the description down below. But if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave. Kusaka can't. No, that's way too complicated. I don't even know how you would spell that. Leave failed blade. Leave a failed blade in the comment section down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please do me a favor. Leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do happen to have a patron below where you can support me for as low as one, kind of one dollar a month to get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks include the live reaction to the very next chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen, along with and free variations of all my chunky behind videos. And I shouldn't have said it like that. <laughs> and if you enjoy $25 Patreon, you're a twenty-five dollar member. You can order whatever video you want. Even if it is like a four-hour live reaction to one of an hour long plus video. But I want to thank you so much for watching. Once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is that Gold Pencil writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members: Connor Plays, Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Red Wolf Four Seven Six Five, Eternal Flame, and Teen Mitgal. And I'd like to give a thank you to our five dollar patrons: Steron, Sean, Panda Goat, Midnight Lord Twenty One, Metal Solid Crisis, Kevin, Igneo, and Ehack One. And I'd like to give a thank you to our seven dollar member: Autumn Mornings Lazo. And I'd like to give a big thank you to our $10 member, Jay Warrior. And I'd like to give another thank you to our $10 patrons, Joaquin and Idemokami. Well, along with another juicy thank you to our $25 patron, China Doll 9 And I'd like to give a final giga gargantuan thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.